Dear students, welcome back to the full modeling chapter. Today we are going to introduce the second useful full model, the bridging full model. According to our classification tree, bridging full model is under the gate level full model, which is a very useful full model, only second to the popular stack full model. So what is the definition of a bridging fault? A bridging fault means two or even more distinct logic signals which are unintended, shorted together, and uh, create wire logic. From this picture of real defect, we can see potential cause for bridging fault. For example, a particle falling between two wires or a particle falling on more than two wires. And this figure we shows a CMP bridging fault, where CMP stands for chemical mechanical polishing. In the semiconductor IC process, we have a piece of metal And then we remove the upper part of this metal to create three different wires. If the CMP was done correctly, these three wires are supposed to be different signals. However, if the CMP is not done correctly, we may have some residual metal that create bridging fault. So, how many two-way bridging fault are there in a circuit of N signals? If we arbitrarily choose two signals, the total number will be in a combinatorial 2 out of N, which is O N squared, number of fault. This is way too many fault. So, we need a physical tool to identify pairs of neighbor signals which are likely to be shorted together from the physical layout information. This is what we call fault extraction. In summary, region 4 is a very practical and realistic fault model. We can see real defect from the picture. However, the number of fault is O n squared if we don't have any physical information. So typically, if we want to use the bridging fault model, we need fault extraction from the layout. There are three types of popular bridging fault models for the CMOS technology. The YO model, YN model, AW model. In this picture, suppose that signals A and B have a bridging fault. If we model it as a wire O, we would insert an imaginary wire O logic gate. So the output A plus B plus is the OR operation of the original A and B. For example, suppose that original A and B are 0 and 1. After the wire or full model. Signal A would be changed to 1. Similarly, if the original input is 1, 0, then B would be changed to 1. So this is why while or model is also called a one dominant full model. Similarly, we can also model this as a wire end model. In this case, we insert an imaginary wire end logic. So the output A plus B plus would be 0, 0 if the original input is 0, 1 or 0, 0 if the original input is 1, 0. So this is why the YM model is also called a zero dominant form model. Finally, we have a dominant form model, which means the value of B is always controlled by the value of A. 
So these are three popular four models for bridging force. Please know that in this picture, the Y logic is just an imaginary gate. They are not real gate in the circuit. For these three different four models, we will need different test patterns to detect them. Let's consider a AB bridging four. Suppose we model this bridging four as a Y or four model. So we can insert an imaginary wire or gate here. So we can change our circuit in this way. When we apply the pattern 0, 1, 0, the output E would be 1. And this would be 1, this is 1, H is 1, J is 0. So the 40 output would be 0, which is different from the good output. In this way, we can detect the 4 by 0, 1, 0. Similarly, we can also detect the 4 by 0, 1, 1. If we use the wire end form model, we can also detect the 4 by the same test patterns. However, if we use the 8 dominant form model, we can only detect the 4 by 0, 1, 0, but not 0, 1, 1. On this example, we know that different bridging form model require different test patterns. Now it's time for you to work on the quiz. Please fill in the table with AE bridging form with three form models. And question number two, please find a test pattern to detect the YO bridging four between A and E. Now please pause the video and work on the quiz. Have you done yet? The answer is like this. For Y and four model and A dominant four model, there are three test patterns. However, for the YO model, we can see that the 40 output and the good output, they are identical. So there is no test pattern to detect the YO4. This is also known as untestable 4. The concept of untestable 4 will be introduced again in our later presentation. Now we have a good question. Since we already have single stuck F4 test pattern, so how effective is single stuck F4 test set for bridging 4? This is a very good question. In 1988, Millman has performed experiment on 74 181ALU. They applied several different 100% 4 coverage single stuck F4 test set. In this table, each column represents a different test set. Totally, there were 8,000 testable bridging faults in the circuit. The experimental results show that there are still many bridging faults not detected by 100% single stuck F4 test set. So, the results show that single stuck F4 test set alone is not good enough to detect all the bridging faults. Some bridging faults are not detected. So what was the reason? Here is one possible explanation. That is feedback bridging fault. A feedback bridging fault can be difficult to be detected. There are two types of feedback bridging fault. One type can create memory. For example, consider the X and the Z feedback bridging fault. Suppose we use the YO for model, then we can model this circuit in this way. Here is the original input Y, here is the original input X, and here is the new output Z+. Plus. Suppose we apply input 0, 1, 1, 0, or 1, 1. The output are 1, 1, 1. They are the same as the good circuit. However, if we apply 0, 0, to this circuit, 
then it become a feedback latch. So the output of this latch is the same as the last state. If we want to detect this fault, we would need a sequence of two test patterns. For example, we can apply input 0, 1 followed by 0, 0. When we apply 0, 1, the output would be 1. When we apply 0, 0, the good output is 0 and the faulty output is 1. In this way, we can detect the fault. Type 2, feedback bridging fault creates oscillation. For example, consider this feedback bridging fault between X and Z. If we use a wire or four model, we can model this circuit in this way. Suppose we apply 1, 0 and 1, 1 to this circuit, the output would be 1. We can detect the fault. So this is called a hard detection. However, if we apply 0, 0 to this circuit, then it becomes a oscillation feedback ring. The output would be 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So we may or may not detect the fault using the pattern 0, 0. We call this a potential detection. The concept of potential detection will be discussed again in our later presentation. Now it's time for you to work on this quiz. Please fill in the truth table with a wire end between X and Z. Question number two, find a test pattern to detect this feedback bridging fault. Now please pause the video and work on this quiz. Okay, here, here are our answers. Suppose we insert a wire end gate into this circuit. If we apply test pattern 0, 1, the output would be 0, which is different from the good output. So we can detect the 4. So the answer is 0, 1. When we apply pattern 1, 0 to this circuit, it becomes a latch. So it would maintain the last state. So we can also apply pattern pair 0, 0 followed by 1, 0. The good output is 1 and the faulty output is 0. This can also detect the fault. So these two answers are both correct. Now let's see which are not considered bridging fault. Number one, bridging fault does not consider short to power or short to ground. Suppose we have a signal that is shorted to power, then we can consider it as a stuck at one fault. Or if it is short to zero, we can consider it as a stuck at zero fault. So they are not considered as bridging fault. Number two, bridging fault does not consider the defect resistance value. Number three, bridging fault does not consider intra cell or intra gate defects. For example, in this picture, we see a piece of extra gate between the transistor gate and the drain. So this is a transistor level intra gate defect. Because bridging fault is a gate level fault model, so we don't consider this kind of fault. Number four, bridging fault does not distinguish between fan out stem and the fan out branches. Number five, bridging fault is not a transient fault. The last two items would be discussed in more details in the following two slides. If you remember, in our discussion of single stock F4, we mentioned that single stock F4 on fan out branch and the fan out stem are considered as different faults. However, in the case of bridging fault, a bridging fault on fan out stem and the fan out branches are considered the same. For example, given this circuit, there are 
A E bridging four, A L bridging four, and A F bridging four. Consider the wire end four model. The output will be exactly the same for these three faults. So for bridging four, A E bridging four, A L bridging four, and A F bridging four are considered the same. So what is the reason? Please think about it in our FFT. Bridging four is a permanent four instead of a transient four. The definition of a permanent four means that the four is always present. A permanent four is caused by defect, such as a particle between two wires. On the contrary, transient faults are not always present. Transient faults. Can be induced by environmental disturbance such as electromagnetic interference or internal disturbance such as IR drop. For example, crosstalk faults caused by coupling effect are transient faults. Consider signal A and E. For permanent bridging fault, the output is always. Zero zero zero. Given these three test patterns, however, if it is a transient four, the output can be zero or one. The result is not quite predictable. So, in summary, in this video, we have introduced three popular bridging four models for CMO technology. They are Y or Y N and A dominant four models. The number of bridging four is O n square, which is way too many for large scale circuits. So we need four extraction tool to identify neighbor signals as a pair. And the single stacked four test set is not good enough to detect all the bridging four. One of the reason is that feedback bridging four may cause memory effect or oscillation effect. And the bridging four model does not distinguish fan out stem and the fan out branches. Finally, bridging four is a permanent four, not a transient four. This is FFT for bridging four. We mentioned that bridging four does not distinguish fan out stem from fan out branches. So AE, AL, and AF bridging four are all the same. So what is the reason? Please think about it. Thank you for watching.